We start this hour in the Middle East. Israel says it has struck a series of Hezbollah targets deep inside Lebanon. According to the army, terrorist infrastructure was hit, including stockpiles of weapons. It follows a deadly rocket attack on the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights on Saturday, in which at least 12 people were killed. Most of the casualties were teenagers who were playing football in the town of Majdal Shams. Israel has blamed Lebanon's Hezbollah movement. It has denied responsibility. Let's cross live now to Jerusalem and speak to our correspondent Barbara Plett Usher. Welcome to you, Barbara. Tell us what's the latest on the Israeli strikes. The Israelis uh, carried out these strikes overnight in Lebanon, in the southern part of the country, um, where those cross-border conflicts has been happening um, over the past months with Hezbollah, but also further north in the Baqa, uh, according to the, uh, the, the Air Force. And uh, that is uh, less common for the Israelis to strike there. So I think that was probably a message that they are preparing for, um, uh, for, for a larger operation. And certainly that is what... Uh, the Israeli officials are saying the language that they're using is very tough. The defense minister uh, has said will ensure that Hezbollah pays a heavy price for this loss. The finance minister uh, is is calling for the the, the the leader of Hezbollah to pay with his head. The, for, the foreign minister is saying an all-out war is approaching. So the rhetoric is pretty steep. Uh, there's going to be a security cabinet meeting later today when the prime minister returns from the United States to talk about what the next step will be, but I think everyone is expecting uh, that the strikes that we saw overnight could be just the beginning uh, of how the Israelis will respond. And what more details do we have about the rocket attack on the Golan Heights in which at least 12 people died? Well, that rocket struck a football pitch where, where uh, children and teenagers were playing football. It, it, frankly, it could hardly have been worse. The, all of the casualties are, are young people. Uh, many of the names have been released as well as the ages. The youngest was 10, the oldest was 16. Uh, and there was one family that lost four children. So it's a real tragedy. The funerals are, have started last night and they will continue uh, later today. Uh, an eyewitness said that the sirens did go off when the rocket uh, was, in the, was in the air, but there wasn't enough time to get to the shelter. The children were running towards the shelter, uh, but the, the Golan Heights is very close to Lebanon, and so the time before the warning came and the time that the rocket struck wasn't enough, and it struck between the children and the, and the shelter. So uh, it, was, it was a very, very uh, tragic and, and, uh, strike, and the leadership of the community has responded with great anger and great anguish uh, against those who the Hezbollah, or they didn't name Hezbollah, but they said against the terrorists who launched the strike, but also against the Israeli authorities saying that we really don't have enough protection here uh, because we're right next to the border with Lebanon. We need to have more uh, protection. We've had strikes before, but this is just the deadliest one. Yeah, Hezbollah denying it was them, but Israel, the IDF, giving details about the rocket uh, and the, the bomb and saying it could only have been them. That's right. Hezbollah had been carrying out some strikes earlier in the afternoon on Saturday for which it claimed responsibility, but uh, it very strongly denied that it had hit the town of Majdal Shams so when the extent of the damage became known. Uh, based on what it had said earlier, it was targeting an Israeli military base in the area, so it's possible that one of the rockets misfired. In fact, that seems probable. It's interesting to see the reaction in Lebanon because this conflict has been taking place between Hezbollah and the Israelis, uh, but other uh, constituencies in Lebanon have responded clearly because they're very alarmed that this is going to lead to uh, a bigger conflict, if not an all-out war. The head of the Druze community in Lebanon, and I should say that the community that was hit in Israel, in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, uh, which is where Majdal Shams is located, uh, was a community of uh, Arab Druze. There are many Druze also in Lebanon, and the leader of that group um, did come out and condemn the killing of civilians, but he also said, look, Hezbollah statement said they weren't responsible. We have to remember that the Israelis um, try to divide uh, and cite discord and fragment the region with their efforts. And so he was putting the emphasis on Israel rather than on Hezbollah uh, and calling for an immediate cessation of hostilities and a ceasefire. The Lebanese government also has made various statements. It usually stays out of uh, the, this ongoing conflict, but it again c uh, condemned the killing of civilians, but said uh, that there must be a cessation of hostilities. The foreign minister has spoken recently and he said, 
Look, I don't think Hezbollah would have targeted this community. It's a community of Arab Druze, as I mentioned, and uh, and we have a large uh, number of them in the country. Perhaps it was a mistake either by Hezbollah or by Israel, um, but he clearly was worried that this would lead to a bigger conflict, and he said, we are talking with Hezbollah uh, and, and asking them not to retaliate at this present time. So I think uh, the expectation is of a strong Israeli strike, and clearly the Lebanese authorities are trying to convince Hezbollah not to respond to that. Okay, Barbara, thank you. Well, we will be live in Beirut in just a few moments' time. First, though, let's remind ourselves of how events unfolded on Saturday. Mark Lowen has been monitoring developments and sent us this report. Early evening in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights and the warning of an incoming threat about to become deadly and dangerous. A rocket struck a football field where children and teenagers were playing. Several were killed in the deadliest strike since the cross-border fire between Lebanon and Israel began last October. The anguish of loved ones at young lives cut short in a conflict that could be about to escalate sharply. A rocket barrage which lit up the sky was claimed by the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, but it denies firing the deadly strike onto the football field. That, the Israeli army spokesman says, is a lie. This attack shows the true face of Hezbollah, a terrorist organization that targets and murders children playing soccer on a Saturday evening. We will act to restore full security on our northern border for all the citizens of the state of Israel. And the question is how Israel's government will react. Benjamin Netanyahu is returning early from the US to chair his security cabinet, where he'll face calls to hit back hard. As the young injured were rushed to hospital, fear is growing that all-out war with Hezbollah, a proxy of Iran, could now be drawing closer. South, in Gaza, the other front of this war, Palestinians too were scrambling to save lives, this time after Israeli strikes killed dozens. Here too, it's children paying the price in a nightmare with no end. The missiles tore into a school housing displaced Gazans. Israel says it targeted a Hamas command and control center inside. But from the rubble came those simply seeking shelter. <laughs> Mustafa says the blast threw him into the air and he fell to the ground. I didn't know where to run for fear, he says, so I fled inside the school thinking it was safe. But then I saw heads, hands and feet. The spark from the 7th of October ignited Gaza and now Golan. The question here is will it start an inferno? Mark Lowen, BBC News, Jerusalem.